Hey, welcome to an Adobe Illustrator tutorial. Um, today we're going to create a starburst um, kind of asset that we can be used in other graphics, um, pretty much anything that you want. Um, and it's a really easy process. And so I'm going to show you how to do that here. Um, so the first thing I did was just open a half by 11 document. Um, you can open any size really. I'm going to create the starburst and then make it fill the entire page. Um, and just remember that um, because we're working with vectors, that means that they're infinitely scalable. And what that means is that no matter how large or small you make something, it's going to maintain the same resolution because it's built, built mathematically um, with points and paths. And so that gives us the freedom to kind of scale it to any size that we want. So this can become like an asset that you use in another document or another image or um, even put into a shape. And um, even though we have an eight and a half by 11 document here, we can kind of throw it into any document in Illustrator and um, resize it. So the first thing that we're gonna do um, is we're going to select the uh, ellipse tool. So we do that by going to the rectangle tool, holding it down, and then going to the ellipse tool. You can also just hit L on your keyboard and that's gonna give you that ellipse tool. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key so that gives me a perfect circle and I'm just going to draw a circle in the center of my page. Now right now uh, my circle has a black stroke and a white fill. Um, I can see that over here on my toolbar. I can also see it up here on my control bar. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my stroke panel. So if you don't see that over here on the right hand side, you're going to go to window and then you're going to go down to where it says stroke and that's going to open up that panel. I also want to be able to see all of the options in my stroke panel. So I'm going to click on this little um, fly down menu with these like three lines at the top right here and go to where it says show options. When I click on that, um, what I want to choose is I want to make the weight of my line a hundred. So it's going to make it a lot thicker. Um, and I'm just going to hit enter. It's automatically going to put points on there. And I'm also going to choose dash line. So that's going to give me like the kind of start of the starburst. Now, if you're noticing that your like these lines are too thin and you would prefer to have thicker lines, um, the, uh, the size of the dash you can increase. So if I just click in here and I actually uh, use my keyboard, I can increase the size of that dash. Or if I really want to have it like a really tiny one, I can also decrease it and that's going to make my lines even smaller. So depending on what kind of starburst you're looking for, um, you know, then you can either make it bigger or smaller. So I'm going to choose a medium one. So I'll just say 20 and um, also depends kind of on how large you make your circle. So once I've done that, I want to um, select, make sure that my circle is selected. I'm going to do that with my black arrow. And what I want to do is instead of this being a stroke on this circle, what I want is for each one of these shapes to be their own shape. Okay. And so what I would have to do to make that happen is go to object, path, and then outline stroke. And so what's this, what this is doing is that it's turning my stroke into a shape. And so what you'll see happen is that if I now select this with the white arrow, you can see that each one of these shapes are individual. Now that also leaves my original kind of like circle and I don't really want that to be in play anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it with my white arrow and I'm just going to hit delete. I might have to hit delete twice to get rid of um, that entire circle. Now what I want is for all of these like inside points to kind of match up. So again, if I select it with my white arrow, you can see that there are these points on the inside and then there's points on the outside and they are all selected right now because they are all filled in dark. Okay. What I want to do is I just want to select my inside one. So there's, there's two tools that you can use. One, you could just, um, select with the white arrow, hold down the shift key, um, and kind of click through all of those points. But I find that a little bit tedious and there's an easier way to do it. So if you go over here to the toolbar, you're going to see a tool called the lasso tool. The lasso tool allows us to kind of draw around things that we want to select. So in this case, I actually can just like draw around just those inside points. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle or anything like that. It can be totally wobbly. 
And then when I do that, what I'm going to see is that all of those inside circles are selected and the outside points are not selected because you can see they are like little white in the inside instead of filled in. So once I've done that, I want to bring them all together. There's two ways to do this. One is you can right click, but if you're not familiar with um, right clicking, then you're going to want to go up to where it says object, path, and then you're going to go down to where it says average. And we want to select both down here under axis and we're going to hit OK. And so what that's going to do is it's going to bring all those points to one central area. And now we've got our starburst. Now, um, I want this starburst to kind of fill the whole page as if it were a background. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit by hitting command minus. And then I'm going to hold both the alt key and the shift key. What this does is it draws it out um, from the center point instead of just from the corner. And it also maintains the proportion so that I'm making sure that I'm not stretching out um, my, my uh, starburst at all. I could if I wanted to, I could actually stretch it so that it's a little taller um, or a little wider, but I actually want to just keep it a perfect circle. Another thing that I could do is if I didn't want to have my starburst at the center of my page, I could kind of put the central point at the top there and then I could hold shift and just make it a little bit larger um, so that it extends off the page. Now, the thing about having something that extends off the page is that in Illustrator, it's not that big of a deal. If we were to save this as another file type, um, well, depending, because if we save it as a PNG, sometimes it could include this stuff that exists outside of the artboard. However, if we're just saving it as a PDF or something like that, um, it'll automatically kind of clip this stuff. However, sometimes if visually when we're working on something, it can be really annoying um, having that kind of stuff extend beyond the end of the artboard because we can't understand, like it, it's hard for our brain to kind of visualize what it's going to look like. So um, what we can do is we can apply a clipping mask. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your rectangle tool. So it probably is on your ellipse tool still. So you just have to click and hold down select the rectangle tool and instead of like clicking and dragging to make our rectangle, we're just going to click once because we know that our um, file size or the artboard size is eight and a half by 11. So um, also something to keep in mind is if your unit of measurement is different than inches right now, you actually have to type in the actual unit of measurement. So I'm typing I N. Um, if my unit of measurement was in pixels or something like that, um, it would automatically convert it to whatever the unit of measurement that we're working on if, as long as I put that um, unit in there. So um, I've now got this rectangle and I'm going to kind of do a fancy way of aligning it to my artboard so that I know exactly in the center. Um, up here at the top, you're going to see there's like a little align selection. Um, it looks like a square with kind of these points on the ends of it. Um, so what I, I can click on that and I can choose align to artboard and you're going to see all these kind of icons pop up. But if I don't see that on my control bar, um, I can also open up the align panel. And just like with our stroke panel, you're going to click on that fly down menu and say show options because this allows us to determine what we're aligning that particular shape to. So if I click on that and I say align to and then I'm going to choose artboard and then I can center it both um, horizontally and vertically. And now it's directly over top of um, that artboard. It's also over top of our starburst. So we want it to be in the front just in case we're not sure we can go to object, arrange and bring to front. And we know that now it's in front of our, um, our starburst. Now we only have two things in this document. So we need to select both the starburst and the rectangle. We can do that by hitting command a, which will select everything in the document. You can also click on it with the black arrow, hold shift and click on our um, other shape unless, you know, and that way if you have something else in the document, um, you don't have to worry about it. Um, you can also rubber band select, which means clicking and just dragging and kind of creating a fake rectangle over top of um, those two items and it will automatically select all of them. And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply what's called a clipping mask. A clipping mask is basically going to use this rectangle, which is on top of our starburst. And it's going to anything that's outside of that rectangle, it's going to clip it.
Now with a clipping mask, because it's a mask, it's actually just hiding the extending parts. It hasn't actually cut the shape. You could do that as well, but I'm gonna save that for another time to kind of explain how that works. So I'm just gonna go to object, and then I'm gonna go down to where it says clipping mask, and I'm gonna choose make. You can also hit command seven. And when I do that, what's gonna happen is that rectangle that we had that was black or whatever color, I mean, it's okay if it was a different color, um, is going to disappear. And what we're gonna end up with is only the starburst part that was on the inside. So now you can see as I like roll over it that my starburst in its entirety still exists. Um, so even actually I could kind of select this with my white arrow and if I'm not really keen on having that, um, that center point, like off center, I could kind of move it to the center if I wanted to, or I could kind of move it off to the side. So um, just because we've clipped it doesn't mean that it's in its permanent state. We can still adjust it. And that's the nice thing about a clipping mask versus cutting it. If I cut it permanently, then I wouldn't be able to have that opportunity to kind of like move around the center point, okay? So that's pretty much it for this. Basically now I can use this wherever I want. Um, I could also change the color of it. So I can go over here to my color picker and basically change it to any color that I want. And so it becomes like this really versatile thing that we can use in lots of our designs. Hope this is helpful. See you next time.